Good evening. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, somewhat earlier, I uh, made a comment that this uh, Joule Thief oscillator circuit using the 2N3055 and the coil uh, wired in the alternate laser saber gadget mall configuration uh, would also act just like a Bedini pulse motor charger, battery charger, uh, but with no moving parts. And some people thought that that might not be true or were confused about how that could happen. So anyway, what I've got here is I have the circuit hooked up and this is the same one that was running the ring oscillator before and it's still hooked up to operate the ring oscillator off of its AC output and I have the oscilloscope monitoring that AC output uh, on the center the B channel there but right now I just have it on the center of the screen okay and then I also have in parallel to that output to the ring oscillator I have these two yellow clip leads and they come over to this uh, 260 microfarad 250 volt electrolytic capacitor through a diode that's a 1N4002 uh, rectifier diode there and then I'm monitoring the voltage on this capacitor with this voltmeter right here okay so this is your external circuit could be a battery could be a, an inverter a battery charging circuit whatever whatever you like uh, this is going to be whatever is whatever you want to charge up from the inductive spikes that are produced the oscillations and inductive spikes that are produced by the circuit. Okay, now I have the circuit here getting ready to be powered by the Elenco power supply right here. And I actually have, let's see, let me disconnect, make sure that's completely disconnected. Now I have the Elenco just barely turned on. I have it turned, the lowest it'll go is about 2 volts. So if I turn it off, it's got uh, caps in there that keep the voltage up a little bit, but you can see them going off now. So if I just barely turn it on, that's about 2 volts, so I'm going to crank it up just a hair to about there, about 2.5 volts or so. Okay, so 2.5 volts on the Allen Co. Alright, and uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, apply the power to the circuit. And as you see, nothing happens. We've got nothing going on. All right? Because the circuit needs to be tickled a little bit to get it to start to start oscillating. And I've discovered this kind of by accident. If I tickle it, Here's a resistor, so I'm just going to tickle it here, just like that, and that was enough to get it started. There's your oscillations. Now remember, we're at two and a half volts in a minuscule current draw here, and uh, look, we've already gotten up to the voltage that's necessary to light the neons. So they come on at about 90 volts. So we're running the ring oscillator and we're charging this external capacitor at the same time and all this is happening on a minuscule voltage something under 3 volts input 
and uh, just a few tens of milliamps of current flow. I guess I could get a I could get an input voltage reading on that, couldn't I? If I use the Simpson, let's see exactly what kind of voltage we got on here. Whoops. I will usually stay in there. Well, usually, except when I'm trying to do it with one hand, it'll stay in there. Okay, so the Simpson is showing us that we have 2.94 volts. Three volts coming out of there feeding this circuit and it's running the ring oscillator and we've gotten the external capacitor charged up to 150 volts and still climbing and that's just through a simple half wave rectification using a single diode so we're actually wasting a lot of power there Okay, so you can see that the charge rate has slowed down a little bit. But what happens if I increase the voltage up here? Let's go let's go all the way up to five volts. Okay. Ring oscillators flashing faster. We have more voltage. That's at 20 volts per division, or 200 volts per division, rather. So we're looking at 400, about 420 volts peak to peak there. And of course, we're rectifying that, so we're up to 240, 250 on that. And uh, that's actually uh, that's the voltage limit of that capacitor. So I'm going to turn down the input voltage right now. And I'm also going to unplug the capacitor. So now we have 237 volts, 235 trapped on that capacitor. And uh, I'm going to show you what uh, 200 volts and 260 microfarads will do. Wait a minute, let me just make sure that my circuit is completely disconnected from that. All right. So 215, 217 volts, 260 microfarads. Okay. Did you get that? All right. Thanks for watching.